We've done it again. The writer the big boss likes the least has gone down the rabbit hole on Wikipedia, so we could bring you another video of disturbing Wikipedia pages. Don't worry, they'll be able to sleep again without a nightlight. Someday. Number 8 on our list is a town that you probably wouldn't want to vacation at, that is, even if you were allowed to. Number 8. The Real Silent Hill In North Central Pennsylvania, the town of Centralia has been on fire for the last 59 years. Yeah, you heard that correctly, the town has been burning since 1962. From the mid-1800s through the Great Depression, the majority of residents living in and around tiny rural Centralia made their living by mining rich deposits of anthracite coal. As the coal industry dwindled, the area was left with several abandoned underground coal mines. While there are competing theories as to how the fire started, the generally accepted version is that on May 27, 1962, some firefighters were cleaning up the local landfill by burning trash. Unfortunately, the fire at the dump sparked a larger fire in a coal seam beneath the town. Since then, the fire has spread, causing the ground under Centralia to become extremely hot, reaching over 900 degrees Fahrenheit in some spots. At times, noxious fumes leaking from the sinkholes has sickened residents. Several attempts were made to evacuate and put out the fire, but to no avail. Some of the abandoned coal mines stoke the fire, and at this point it would be incredibly expensive and also extremely dangerous to figure out which mine tunnels are fueling the fire and close them off. Over the years, authorities have relocated, sometimes forcibly, the majority of residents. Today, Centralia is a ghost town. It's become a popular destination for urban explorers and also served as the creepy inspiration for the horror movie franchise Silent Hill. If you think that's bad, our next topic involves something fundamental that all creatures must do to survive, and how amazingly horrible life becomes when you can't do it. Number 7. Fatal Insomnia What if every night you had trouble falling asleep? You're exhausted, but everything you try, such as warm milk, calming music, meditation, and sleeping pills doesn't really help. You move through your days in a daze, confused, disoriented, fatigued. In the middle of ordinary tasks, you suddenly nod off for seconds at a time, and then you jerk back awake. Your insomnia grows worse night by night. You begin to slur your words. You see hallucinations. You have sudden episodes of sweating profusely. Your whole existence longs for the sweet embrace of restful slumber, but you cannot find relief. Such are the symptoms for sufferers of an extremely rare disorder, fatal insomnia. As time goes on, the insomnia increasingly grows worse. Sufferers may develop dementia, coordination and speech problems. Other symptoms include constipation, an elevated heart rate, high blood pressure, as well as menopause for women and impotence for men. There is no cure for this disease, although at least one patient was able to slow symptoms with a variety of strategies including vitamin therapy, meditation, and a sensory-deprived controlled sleep process. Fatal insomnia results in death within a few months to a few years after the onset of symptoms, the average length of demise being about 18 months. While the average age of the sufferer is 50, the disorder has been diagnosed in patients 18 to 60. Diagnosis of fatal insomnia is suspected based on symptoms. Patients undergo sleep studies, PET scans, and genetic testing to receive a more complete view of symptoms. However, a suspected case of fatal insomnia can only be confirmed by a brain autopsy after death, a disease where your body slowly shuts down because although you long to, you're simply unable to do a natural bodily function is incredibly disturbing in our book. The next disturbing topic involves one of the most beautiful and remote places on Earth. Sadly, it's becoming polluted in a crazy, macabre way due to humans trying to achieve a goal. Number 6. Green Boots Many climbers set out with dreams of conquering Mount Everest, however, sometimes the mountain conquers them. Number 6 on our list of even more disturbing Wikipedia pages is Green Boots. Nicknamed for the bright green Kolflak mountaineering boots on his feet, Green Boots is the body of an unidentified climber who perished in a limestone alcove cave at 27,900 feet on Mount Everest. He's become a landmark on the main northeast ridge route of Mount Everest and expeditions climbing from the north side pass him by. Green Boots is believed to be Swang Paljor, one of eight climbers who died in a blizzard during the 1996 Mount Everest disaster. Green Boots isn't the only corpse on the mountain. Over 300 people have died climbing Mount Everest and some 200 remain on its slopes. In fact, an area just below the summit is nicknamed Rainbow Valley because of the many corpses laying there wearing brightly colored mountaineering apparel. It is incredibly expensive, labor-intensive, and dangerous to the rescuers to retrieve a corpse. Some climbers think that the dead should be left where they lie out of respect for the dead climbers' love for the mountain, while others see the corpses as a macabre warning to know one's limits with nature. Number 5 on our list of disturbing Wikipedia pages 
is one of the most shocking events to take place at the end of the 20th century. Curiously, the catalyst for this event was a natural wonder that the Earth probably won't experience again for close to 2,533 years. Number 5. Heaven's Gate Cult in the late 1990s, the comet Hale-Bopp passed close to the Earth and was visible to the naked eye for a record 18 months. Professional and amateur astronomers worldwide tracked the comet's path across the heavens. Also tracking the comet was Heaven's Gate, a cult waiting for the right moment to put their plan into action. Responding to a tip, on March 26, 1997, deputies of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department discovered a scene inside of mass suicide. 39 members of Heaven's Gate, including the leader, Marshall Applewhite, committed a coordinated series of ritual suicides in order to join what they believed was an extraterrestrial spacecraft following Comet Hale-Bopp. Marshall believed the UFO would take their souls to another level of existence above human, which he described as being both physical and spiritual. All 39 were found wearing identical black shirts and sweatpants, brand new black and white Nike Decades athletic shoes, and armband patches reading Heaven's Gate Away Team. The identical clothing represented unity, while the Nike Decades were chosen simply because the group got a good deal. News of the deaths motivated at least one copycat suicide by a member of the public not affiliated with the group. In the months after the mass suicide event, at least three more members of Heaven's Gate cult committed suicide. Currently, former members of Heaven's Gate continue to maintain the group's website and media presence. The website explains the group's rationale for committing suicide, saying Hale-Bopp brings closure to Heaven's Gate. Our 22 years of classroom here on planet Earth is finally coming to conclusion, graduation from the human evolutionary level. We're happily prepared to leave this world and go with Ty's crew. The culmination of the Heaven's Gate cult was wild, but the next topic is insane. The appalling, politically driven actions of a leader had an unexpected twist and ultimately the end result was very different than originally intended. Number 4. Cadaver Synod In January of 897, Pope Formosus was made to appear at the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome and stand trial. He was accused of perjury, violating canon law, and several other crimes. It was a politically motivated event orchestrated by rulers asserting their power. However, this trial was unusual. Pope Formosus was dead. In fact, he had died some seven months earlier. However, by order of the current pope, Stephen VI, the corpse of Formosus was exhumed from his tomb and brought to the papal court for a trial. He was propped up on a throne and a deacon was appointed to answer on Formosus' behalf, since he clearly couldn't answer himself. Once the trial had concluded, Formosus was judged to be guilty and his papacy was retroactively nullified. Stephen had the corpse stripped of its papal vestments and then cut off the three fingers of Formosus' right hand that in life he had used for blessings. Also, Stephen formally invalidated all of Formosus' acts and ordinations. Formosus' corpse was then buried in a graveyard for foreigners, but that wasn't insulting enough. They dug him up once again, tied weights to his body, and threw him into the Tiber River. But that wasn't the end of Formosus. His corpse washed up on the banks of the river. Rumor began to circulate throughout Rome that the corpse was performing miracles. Public opinion turned against Pope Stephen. A mob rose up, removed him from power, and imprisoned him. In the summer of 897, Stephen VI was murdered in jail. In December 897, Pope Theodore II convened another synod which undid the Cadaver Synod and restored Formosus' ordinations. He ordered that Formosus' corpse be dressed in papal regalia and then reburied in St. Peter's Basilica. So, eventually, Formosus received restorative justice. Unfortunately, in our next story, there was little justice for the victim, and what happened to the murderer after the crime is pretty unbelievable. Number 3. The Kobe Cannibal Sadly, there are many killers who have committed a host of horrific crimes that we could include in this video. However, we decided to include only Issei Sagawa, nicknamed the Kobe Cannibal. Not only was his crime incredibly disturbing, but the public's reaction was disturbing also. In 1981 in Paris, a Japanese exchange PhD student Issei Sagawa murdered his Sorbonne classmate René Hartevelt. He then spent the next several days mutilating, violating, and cannibalizing her corpse. He was caught by French police soon after, dumping two suitcases containing some of René's remains near a lake. Issei's wealthy father hired a lawyer for his defense. After two years of pretrial detention, Issei was found legally insane. Declared unfit to stand trial, he was ordered to be held indefinitely in a mental institution. Interested in Issei's case, popular author Inuhiko Yumoda visited him. Issei shared his written account of committing murder with Inuhiko, who got the recollection published in Japan under the title In the Fog. The public had avidly followed the case, and Issei's book sparked a macabre media frenzy. The French authorities, tired of the publicity, deported Issei to Japan. 
Upon arrival, Issei was immediately committed to Matsuzawa Hospital in Tokyo. Psychologists examined him and declared him sane, finding that sexual perversion was his only reason for murder. In other words, they thought Issei was just evil. The charges against Issei in France had been dropped, the court documents sealed, and unavailable to Japanese authorities. Therefore, Issei could not be legally detained in Japan. On August 12, 1986, he simply checked himself out of the hospital, having been imprisoned for just about five years for his crime. Despite criticism, Issei has remained free since then. For several years, Issei was quite the cause celebre. Everyone wanted to interview this sophisticated, erudite monster. He was frequently invited to be a guest speaker and commentator. Photographers took publicity photographs of him eating meat and painting nude models. He wrote more books about his own crime and other murders. Also, he dined at restaurants and wrote food reviews for a magazine. However, there were those who criticized the media frenzy surrounding Issei. During the early 2000s, it became harder for Issei to find work. Although he continued to be interviewed and generate public interest, more recently health problems had kept the aging Issei out of the public eye. He lives alone and receives daily care from his younger brother or caregivers. If you've been eating while watching this video, you may want to put down your food for this next disturbing Wikipedia page. Don't say we didn't try to warn you. Number 2. Kasumatsu – Rotten Cheese there's a lot of, let's say, unique dishes out there such as halkark or fermented shark and Rocky Mountain oysters or bull testicles. But in our minds, a traditional Sardinian cheese called kasumartsu is at the top of the list of disturbing things you can eat. Kasumartsu literally means rotten or putrid cheese. It starts out as a regular wheel of pecorino. Part of the rind is removed to allow the cheese flies to lay eggs in the cheese. Once the eggs hatch, the translucent white larvae eat through the cheese and expel an acid from their digestive system. The acid breaks down the cheese fats and makes it soft and runny. A wheel of kasumartsu is ready to eat when it's completely colonized by maggots and has reached a late stage of decomposition. It generally takes the tiny worms one to two months to produce the desired effect in the cheese. Traditionally, katsumatsu is served with flatbread and a glass of robust red wine. The strong-smelling soft cheese is infested with hundreds of maggots, which jump and writhe in your mouth as you eat it. That is, if you can get it to your mouth. When the cheese is sliced or scooped out of the rind, the maggots react. They protect themselves by coiling up and springing up to a half a foot away from danger. So while lifting some katsumatsu towards your mouth, maggots could leap on your face. Some aficionados chill their cheese to slow or kill the larvae. Others place the cheese in an airtight container to suffocate them to death just before eating so they don't have to deal with the leaping larva problem. Even worse than maggots jumping on you, the cheese might be contaminated with nasty bacteria such as salmonella. It can trigger allergic reactions in some eaters, and there's also the possibility that the maggots will survive your stomach acid and colonize your intestines, causing intestinal miasis. The symptoms can be horrible abdominal pain, fever, vomiting, gastric lesions, anal itch, and bloody or maggoty stool. This is why some have called kasumatsu the most dangerous cheese in the world. The EU has actually banned kasumatsu due to the food hygiene regulations. Offenders caught with the cheese face heavy fines. This has not prevented a black market for kasumatsu. Our final choice for a disturbing Wikipedia page is the shocking tale of a man who earned himself a place in infamy because he believed death was not a hindrance to love. Number 1. Carl Tanzler Carl Tanzler, a radiology technologist, was living an ordinary life in Key West, Florida when a life-changing event happened. On April 22, 1930, Carl met a local beauty, Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyas, when she came to the Marine Hospital for an examination. He fell head over heels. Elena was eventually diagnosed with tuberculosis, an infectious disease which generally impairs lung function. While treatment options have since improved, in the 1930s TB was frequently fatal. Carl treated Elena with his self-professed medical knowledge, trying a variety of medicines. He also showered her with gifts and allegedly confessed his love to her. It's not known whether Elena returned his affections. Despite Carl's best efforts, Elena passed away on October 25, 1931. A heartbroken Carl paid for her funeral, and with the permission of her family had an above-ground mausoleum built. Carl visited Elena almost every night. One night, in April 1933, Carl broke into Elena's mausoleum and stole her body. Allegedly, Carl claimed that when he sat by her grave and serenaded her with her favorite Spanish song, Elena's spirit would visit him and tell him to remove her from her grave. Carl fitted the bones of Elena's corpse together with piano wire and stuffed her body cavity with rags so that she maintained her original form. As her skin decomposed, Carl replaced it with silk cloth soaked in wax and plaster of Paris. He also gave her corpse glass eyes. Carl dressed the corpse in stockings, jewelry, and gloves and kept it in his bed. 
fact used large amounts of various perfumes, disinfectants, and preserving agents to mask the odor and slow decomposition. Elena's sister Florinda had heard rumors of Carl sleeping with the disinterred body of her sister. In October 1940, she confronted him at his home. Elena's body was eventually discovered. Florinda alerted the authorities and Carl was arrested. Carl was examined and found mentally competent to stand trial on the charge of wantonly and maliciously destroying a grave and removing the body without authorization. However, eventually the charge was dropped as the statute of limitations for the crime had run out. The case drew a media frenzy. Perhaps surprisingly, Carl was sympathetically viewed as an eccentric romantic by the public. Elena's body was examined by doctors and then was temporarily put on public display at a funeral home. Eventually, she was returned to the cemetery where she was reburied in an unmarked grave in the secret location to prevent further tampering. Carl used a death mask to create a life-sized effigy of Elena and lived with it until his death at age 75 on July 3, 1952. Some claim that Carl managed to switch bodies and that he lived with the real body of Elena until he passed away. Check out the original disturbing Wikipedia pages video here. Have you heard about the worst internet attack the world has ever seen? View this video to learn about it.